Hello and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host Brian. We're going to wrap up today with a special selection which is where one of you tell me exactly what it is I need to check out. Today's special selection comes at us from Timmy Lou and Corporation Transfigured Night. That's it. No additional context to it. We're just going to dive right in. This comes off of their self-titled album, And Corporation, which came out in 2024. Okay, so this is recent. When in 2024? June 27. Okay, so just a few months old then. Let's dive into this. See what And Corporation is bringing to the table with Transfigured Night. Yeah, so it's a little longer than 4-4. Four, four. That fourth beat is held on to. Yeah, and it's not quite 5, so it'd be we go from downbeats to offbeats we'll actually find a 4-4 four four in here that's pretty cool You know this is going to be a hit in the community lots of people are going to be happy they found this especially since they only have 200 monthly listeners i'd wager most listeners to the uh, to this channel aren't aware of them but this is fantastic atmosphere building sparse with that snare. Yeah, every four bars. The violin, the beauty of that on top of this really gritty guitar, that is... It's easy to get lost in the swirling uh, rhythms of this too. Yeah, a little plucked violin with some reverb on it. Upright bass. eerie with the slight dissonance just kind of hovering on the outside. So we've shifted to a seven. But every fourth time through, it's only six. So that's neat. Very ominous. 
spooky. Interesting tone for this lead guitar here. It kind of stands out as being, I don't know, it's an interesting sort of sour tone is the first word that comes to mind. It's not, it's not bad, it's just different. Slight detune on was that the violin back there? Okay. This is how they're resolving the song then? It's interesting too how we shift from accenting the downbeats to accenting the offbeats. <laughs> A little triangle hit there at the end. Hmm. Hmm. That's a fun little song. Instrumental, too. I, I don't think that really dawned on me until just now. I was trying to see if I could remember any specific lines in here. Maybe just to get a little bit of a direction to take some of this. I was like, wait, no, there are no words. Yeah, I think that's always fun instrumental songs that are you know they just capture your imagine in such a way that you don't even realize that they're instrumental very cool stuff um yeah so this is cool too because i i kind of want to focus on instrumentation first we do have a drum kit in here we have an electric guitar but we don't have an electric bass we have an upright bass uh we have a triangle there at the end there is, I think, some one synthesizer, maybe, and then two violins would be my guess. And what I love about this is that I would say from a compositional and production standpoint, this is post-rock. Right? Uh, I think that's also the type of fan that is going to that this music is going to appeal to people who love sitting within an atmosphere and listening to a slow evolution of a sound with a generally rock coded composition um, it also is highly rhythmic in nature which i don't normally always associate with post-rock but shows up enough 
Um, and we're, we'll actually touch on why I think that works well in a second. But the instrumentation is unique. We do have the drum and the guitar, but we have an upright bass and violins um, on the other side of the equation, which I think is pretty cool. The uh, timbral difference works really well here. The upright bass has a warm softness to it that the electric bass can have, but doesn't always have. It depends on how you know you create your tone for the instrument. But the violins, they are both warm and cutting. There's something uh, piercing about a violin tone that can just get through any bit of noise and find the spotlight. But it also has this really warm resonance, I think, because of the material used in you know creating a violin and the bow. And all of that comes together into something... Uh, really beautiful and diverse when you take the the acoustic strings and put it against the electric guitar and uh, you know you bring the drum kit underneath all of that not not a marching or or a uh, I don't know symphonic snare but a rock snare something that has a bit more bite to it that can cut through things a little better and it creates a very uh, cool combination of sounds that I don't think I've heard for post-rock before, but the combination works exceptionally well in creating this uh, this atmosphere in this track and allowing it to sort of sway and morph between the various styles and, and emotions that it does. Um, so yeah, I, I guess after that, I would mentioned it, let's just... Let's get to it, right? Metric stuff. So we have four in here. We have some 4-4 four, four towards the end. It's a nice resolution. But prior to that, we have a bunch of really funky ideas as far as time goes. We have some 3-4 sections. We have some 7-4 sections. We have uh, the alternating 7-7-7-6. Seven, 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 so that the phrase itself feels like it lurches forward there at the end. You get used to this feeling of seven, which has its own lurch to it. You expect the even number of that eighth beat to come in, but you don't get it. You move to beat one. The, the phrase restarts a little earlier. But you get into that groove, and then <laughs> every fourth bar, you get another beat removed on top of that, which makes the, the whole idea now feel like it's lurching. And it's this consistent feeling of, of never really um, being able to anticipate anything unless you're just paying a ton of attention to it or of course you know eventually you just you get that gut feeling you listen to it a million times and now it's just normal for that that pattern to be that way but on a first time listen uh, you know you, you get that first misstep I'm like oh okay okay we're a beat shy okay we're, we're working in seven so I count out seven a few times I'm like wait a second no we're still a beat shy what happened there <laughs> <laughs> it's that that little bit of confusion um, and I like that they trip you up once they let you get used to things they trip you up again it's uh, it's a good way of keeping the listener on their toes but what I really love too is that opening idea which I had mentioned that I kind of felt as a 9-8 it was 4-4 four, four with an elongated 4 it wasn't quite long enough to be a full beat to bring us to 5-4 but it was somewhere in the middle there now what's really interesting is I could find a syncopation against this that allowed it to become 4-4 four, four. and I, uh, I I conducted that out for you all and I thought that was very cool because it shifts the idea of downbeat accents to offbeat accents in the second half. But we actually see that a lot towards the end of the song. That final section I counted out in 4-4 four, four, but we also had that shifting accent pattern. And I wonder if... I could take that opening uh, polyrhythm that we had and apply it to the end and find that 9-8 in there as well. It didn't even dawn on me until just now. But I wonder if there is this cyclicality or maybe if it is a sort of uh, recontextualization or, or change of perspective to reevaluate where we were to begin with. Because the song does do this... Well... Uh, we touched on, oh, well, let me, let me, okay, before we get into that, <laughs> let's move into uh, poly 
rhythms and polymeter even. Some of the more eclectic parts of this song rhythmically deal with multiple instruments in their own time signatures. And I did not pay enough attention to all of this to, for me to be able to tell you, oh, this instrument was in this time, and this one was in this time, and this one is in this time. But I, I urge you to go back and listen and especially that first section, once we got all the instruments in, this was probably about a minute, minute and a half into the track, once we hit that first full movement. Listen to all the instruments and try to feel out, even if counting beats isn't your strength, just kind of count out seconds. How long does it take for the guitar to get to the beginning of its idea? Oh, you know, that's that's six seconds. Okay, well, listen to the violin. How long does that take? Oh, that's nine seconds. Listen to the drum pattern. Oh, that one's seven and a half seconds. And you can see how each of these ideas takes a different set of time before it starts its loop again. And you'll see how they can get out of phase with each other. And getting out of phase creates something that feels hyper linear. You can find these little loops within it, but no no second of the song ever feels like a second we had heard previously and it's because all the different instruments are at different points and none of them have lined back up to where the larger concept has repeated and i really like that it's a great way to start the song off with this feeling of limitless possibility where we can see all of the motifs within but you know it also feels hyperlinear like there's just no way we're ever going to repeat anything perfectly throughout this and um, I, I'm a fan of that type of polymetric writing it sounds cool it is fun to dissect as a puzzle but I think it works exceptionally well here with the sort of ominous mood we're introduced in it almost feels like the song could go anywhere but that nowhere is safe and I think bringing together the metric side with the atmospheric side works phenomenally well here now on the topic of emotion and we're going to tie this back to that idea of bringing the 9-8 to the end the song is eerie often a fun bouncy kind of eerie at the beginning but more ominous and dreadful as the song continues on until we got to that point around the halfway moment when things just became really tense and from there it only you know the the anxiety of the song the tension of the song only escalated until we reached that resolution about a minute and a half before the end of the track when everything started to mellow out again i don't know what a transfigured night is um in place of looking up lyrics, I guess I'm going to look up that word and see how it can relate to a knight. Um, but the song here to me is, for the most part, creepy, eerie. It certainly fits October spooky vibes. And, um, you know, like I said, the song continues to increase in its tension pretty much over the course of the first you know two-thirds of the track what i find really interesting then is this shift of perspective what if it wasn't a scary night what if it was just a little foggy what if that street light flickering and then going out wasn't a supernatural thing it's just you know your city needs to repair it <laughs> you know that, that street light's been kind of flaky all, all month so you know there are certain situations where I think your imagination can get the best of you. And if you come around to things from a more analytical perspective, maybe you'll come to the conclusion that it's not spooky. It's just a lot of disconnected ideas happening at the same time. It's the fog and the night. And, you know, we have a cold front coming in. That's why it feels cold. And not because of ghosts reducing the temperature, but, you know, just the cold front. Um, and a bunch of, you know, it, it's just a bunch of coincidences. And I think that's kind of what the song feels like to me. Because the end of the song features a lot of the compositional components of the first minute and a half. Just without the eerie atmosphere. We return back to that 4-4. Four, four, and like I said, there's a lot of polyrhythmic stuff going on in here. Maybe that original 9-8 fits in here as well. 
We still have the polyrhythmic stuff from earlier. We have cool texture work. We have ornamental work. We have the synth. I still think it's a synth, but maybe it isn't. It could just be a violin with a ton of effects pedals on it creating this atmospheric stuff we have the guitar giving us these big chunky chords and uh, these fluid uh, melody lines as far as what each, each instrument is doing and how they are participating with the rest of the instruments of the band nothing's really changed the big difference is just that the atmosphere has changed instead of being eerie and spooky and unsettling this is calming and reassuring and it almost feels like the way that you might talk your heart rate back down after working yourself up you're still a little on edge but things are more optimistic at this point and so bringing back a lot of the older ideas but in a different atmosphere i think is a way of just changing your perspective about a situation to make it more positive whether that is a truth of the positivity or just happy thoughts in order to help you get through the experience. Uh, you know, that's, that's still to be seen. But to me, it's about a perspective shift. And I think that's pretty cool. Um, there is, though, one thing that I haven't spoken about. And that's the production. The guitar tone is very crunchy and crisp. It provides a lot of tension even in the more consonant harmony that we hear in this uh you know the first two thirds of the track and it creates a, a level of, of tension that the music itself doesn't quite yet i think this is very cool because it introduces this tension without leaning into it harmonically or atmospherically yet and that allows the song to develop and evolve from there it uses that as a you know a starting point and i think it's pretty cool to introduce the listener to this feeling without actually leaning into it yet it provides a great way for the song to grow and a little bit of foreshadowing if you're paying attention. But beyond that, we also have the production of the synth or the violin, whatever it is, um, creating all these interesting tones, but also the heavy reverb. And this is what gives me the foggy vibe. I probably should have done this whole production thing before the atmospheric bit, but whatever. Um, there's just a ton of reverb and delay on this track, and uh, it's all used to great effect. It's, uh, the reverb gets used a bit excessively, <laughs> uh, for, you know, for good use. It creates that, that very dense fog-like feeling, but I think the, um, the, the, the delay gets used just a hair bit too much, maybe a bit excessively, as I said. Um, it, it creates a cool vibe, though, and it allows that one moment for the plucked violin to seem larger than it is, which kind of plays into the idea of your mind playing tricks on you, of taking a bunch of coincidental ideas and creating a, you know, a supernatural situation out of it. The idea being that it's just one violin, but it sounds like four or five all plucking in um you know out of time with each other and makes something small feel like something big makes something normal feel like something eerie and i think that this whole concept works well from from top to bottom of you know feeling like you're in a, a an eerie situation and coming to realize oh you're not that was just a shadow and that was just a coat on a hanger <laughs> <laughs> you know, you turn the lights on and there's no monsters in the room. That kind of vibe. Um, I am going to look up the word transfigured right here in place of looking up some lyrics and uh, seeing if I can't take anything from that. Otherwise, this, this video is pretty much done. Okay, this is, uh, this is neat. So, transfigure is a verb. And it's a transitive verb. It says um, to give a new or typically exalted or spiritual appearance to. To transform outwardly, usually for the better. I love this because it works so well with my idea of this. Taking a dark, eerie, spooky night, changing your perspective of things and making it more calming, more soothing, seeing through the illusions and, and the way that your minds are playing tricks on you to find the truth, which is usually that you're not in a dark, scary, spooky area. That fog isn't supernatural and there is no, you know, uh, you know Jason Voorhees chasing you here. 
<laughs> uh, and, uh, you know, to transform what felt eerie and uncertain into something more calming and soothing, just the beauty of the night. Now, whether they're necessarily going for any of this, maybe that's just my interpretation of it, but the idea of taking something a bit more unsettling and finding a beauty within it is definitely something that Transfigure would work for. And, uh, yeah, so I, I, I feel pretty good about my perspective on this track and what I got out of it based off of the title, but that doesn't mean it's a definitive take. As usual, these are just my thoughts on Transfigured Nights from Anne Corporation. What are your thoughts, opinions, perspectives on this? Do you have a different opinion or take on it? Put that stuff down in the comments section. Above that, in the description box, you'll find a link to Linktree. It takes you here. You can find links to my music, ways to support the channel, a link to the Discord server, and so much more. Above that, if you could, like, subscribe, and ring the bell greatly appreciate all three of those that wraps it up today for today i'll be back tomorrow though 5 p.m eastern standard time 9 p.m utc as usual until next time remember to be critical not cynical of the music you listen to and have a fantastic morning afternoon or evening whenever you choose to watch my videos mm -hmm.